Algebra 2 Cram, New York State, Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Sign of Trigonometric Functions, Quadrant 3, and the Reference Angle. Now, the odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. What we're doing here is so effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A, okay, or perfect test scores into a brand new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. So basically what I'm trying to say is if I could stick every math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. So to get your healthy dose, inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com, okay, to order this complete Algebra 2 cram session. You have lots of friends, parents, classmates, and colleagues who are also taking Algebra 2 and could use a boost as well. So tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can benefit from ordering this complete cram session. You'll be glad you spread the word because they'll make great study buddies. Last but not least, cramming often gets a bad rap. But what people are actually thinking about is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive to the learning process. We're not hurrying here. We're cramming. There's a huge difference. Hurrying is jam-packing tons and tons of unorganized information into like a really tiny, tiny amount of time. And this isn't going to benefit you. Cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding. And these quantum leaps are imprinted on your mental, spiritual DNA. And it's done in an organized way. But everything seems to happen in a really tiny instant, okay? So let's take our quantum leap now by learning concept number 10 in this series, quadrant three and the reference angle. Standard position and reference angles. What is the reference angle theta sub ref for an obtuse angle theta located in quadrant three? Definitely press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think and sort out your answer. All right, so hopefully by now you are able to press pause and organize your answer in your mind and then on paper or uh, computer, tablet, whatever your recording uh, device is, okay? But if not, that's completely fine. That's why we're here. So before we get into the actual answer, let's do um, some pre-organization. It's important to properly differentiate between the concept of a theta sub ref, the reference angle, be, uh, in each quadrant, okay, because the signs of the tri trigonometric values depend on the signs of x and y in the quadrant where the terminal side of the reference angle is found. And in order to properly understand the concept of theta sub ref, the reference angle, in quadrant three, we first have to organize the concept of standard position in quadrant one, which is what you're going, we're going to go through here, okay? So we have to establish this concept in your mind. An angle in standard position and quadrant one has six key features. First, an angle theta, as shown here, in standard position has its vertex located at the origin, at zero, okay? The ray on the positive x-axis is called the initial side ray. The other ray here that terminates in quadrant one is called the terminal side ray. And just for organization, we're gonna call this ray R for short, okay? Short for ray. And let's say that we arbitrarily choose a point P that has the coordinates X for the X coordinate and Y for the Y coordinate. Um, we're gonna use this to establish the signs of trigonometric functions. All right, so for our purposes, again, the extent of point P in the uh, X direction is going to be located here, X and P rises to the level of Y on the terminal side ray. 
So there we go. And what you can see that we have is the formation of a right triangle, which we're going to indicate here. So if in our imaginations we resolve our terminal side ray, which now becomes a terminal side, a terminal side segment, you have a right triangle of formation. And you can look at this as the hypotenuse with regard to the theta, okay? And this is where signage comes in. Because um, this side is really the x-coordinate, the x-coordinate can be positive if you're in quadrants one and four, but negative if you're located in quadrants two and three. And quadrant three for this particular cram session is our quadrant of interest. And you could say the same thing for the y-coordinate, which is what this height represents opposite theta or sometimes looked at as the numerator for the sine of theta. So y, the y coordinate set is, is positive in quadrants one and two, but negative, of course, in quadrants three and four. Quadrant three being our quadrant of interest here, okay? All right, but one last thing that I want you to note is that r, which is short for ray, is not a coordinate, rather it's a measurement, okay? And um, it's just a play on the distance formula where R, or the terminal side segment, or in this case, within the right triangle, a hypotenuse, equals the square root of the x-coordinate squared plus the y-coordinate squared. So you can clearly see this is a version of a distance formula if your two points are going to be x, y, and 0, 0, which is why this is standard position because the vertex is located at 0, 0. And what this does is it takes care of signage. So whereas these two um, coordinates or values represent uh, locations, this is just a measurement, okay? So the hypotenuse will always be positive because it's a measure of length where you just square the x-coordinate, add the y-coordinate squared, and undo that, undo the squaring by taking the square root. That takes care of any negative signs, okay? All right, so now that we established that the measurement of r is always going to be positive, um, let's take a look at quadrant three. I hope that wasn't too much information for you. Even if it is, it's okay. Just, just go through it once, you know, don't take it, Think of it as important, but don't take it too seriously. Trust me, if you just look at it, you're going to get it. And if you look at it again on dull speed, you'll get more. Right? It's just a, a matter of repetition to form the new habit of knowing what all this stuff means. Okay? All right. So now let's go to quadrant three. And what we're trying to figure out is what is theta ref. For the angle theta, okay? So for any angle theta located in quadrant three, what's going to happen is this. It's going to be an obtuse angle, obviously. Okay, so you see why that's an obtuse angle, and this is the terminal side ray, okay? So theta ref basically is going to be the positive acute angle that um, theta makes with the x-axis right here. So although this is our angle of interest, theta, the obtuse angle, our theta ref is going to be the positive acute angle that theta makes with the x-axis. And in this case, it's the negative aspect of the x-axis, all right? So this is our basic answer. And calculation of theta can be found by doing this. Um, theta ref is equal to theta, the obtuse angle, minus the extent of quadrant two, which is 180 degrees, okay? And just, you know, keep in mind the values of all the quadrantal angles. When I say quadrantal angle, I mean angles whose terminal side ray and on the x or y axis. So here we have a terminal uh, quadrantal angle of zero degrees 
90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, okay? You could also do this by, find theta ref by um, subtracting theta from 270 degrees, but usually in math we just stick to 180 degrees. You don't have to, but that's just the um, precedence that's been established, okay? All right, or let's say you want to find out what theta is based upon theta reference. What you can do is take theta reference and add 180 degrees. And the, why is theta reference important? It's because when you use your graphing calculator and you find the inverse cosine, inverse sine, any inverse function is going to return a value that represents an angle. The angle given is always going to be theta reference because most of these uh, calculators don't have a built-in tool to figure out which quadrant you're in. So you're going to get a theta reference and you're going to have to decide what is my quadrant or quadrants of interest. And based upon that, you're going to have to do such calculations. Okay. Whether in, well, we know that for, um, for quadrant one, theta reference is equal to theta ref because it's the positive acute angle made with the X axis and acute meaning it's between the quadrantal angles, zero degrees and 90 degrees. Okay. So hopefully I gave you more clarity and I did not confuse you. If I did, just email me and holler and scream and I'll, I'll clarify things for you more. All right, thanks for tuning in. Comprehension of this material is not difficult at all. And once um, you, in the time it takes to watch the complete cram session, you'll be able to answer a battery of questions regarding Algebra 2. So make sure you inbox me at me medicine spelling here at gmail.com to order the complete cram session. All right, good luck studying. I know you're going to do amazing.